trail till like 4:47 to go in the game. Yeah. What do you feel like made the difference down the stretch in this one? Uh, I thought Sears and Nelson hit timely shots. Um, their ability to turn us over. Uh, 19 turnovers at home is just uh, not put yourself in their no position. Um, transition defense, setting our half court defense in the second half was uh, ineffective. It did, we just did a poor job off of free throws, off of makes, off of misses. Um, our urgency level wasn't the same as it was in the first 20 against the team that is as good in the first few seconds of the clock as anyone in the country. And uh, they capitalized a couple of free throw line blockouts haunted us. Um, but a couple of Sears threes in the, in the right corner at the top of the key late were huge shots. And I thought he was fantastic defensively as well. Um, as all of those guys were, um, particularly in the second half. But as well as we played defensively in the first half, we just, we just weren't as sharp in the second 20. And you can't beat a, a good team with uh, that type of effort defensively. Mike, was there any common thread between this and, and Tennessee, how they closed out that one? Um, yeah, it, potentially, uh, you know, it, it, as you're building, you're, you you got to learn how to win, right? And um, those two games were um, had some similarities in that you're playing with a lead in front of an electric environment, and there's a lot of emotion in the building, and then all of a sudden, um, they hit some, you hate saying they hit tough shots, right? Because you take away something from, from the opposition, but Sears did step up and hit a couple like daggers and, um, we didn't respond well enough, um, especially with the empty possessions offensively that we had, um, yeah, it took the air out of the building a little bit. The, the environment in the building was obviously more of a factor in the first half because of the way that we were playing. It can't be all about defending at a really high level when you're making jump shots. Um, it's something that we'll continue to preach with this current team and uh, and moving forward with this program. Um, credit Bama for their defensive resolve through their empty offensive possessions, particularly in the first 25 minutes of the game. Um, we continue to defend, defend it at a much higher level, in fact. Uh, playing without the lead, and we've done that. You know, we've done that um, a couple times here this season. But got to be better with. Um, obviously, yeah, you brought it up. Playing with a lead at home. You uh, alluded to this, the, the turnovers. It, it just it was the type of them that seemed odd. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a, a unforced, uh, maybe maybe getting up and getting too jacked by. I don't know. What, what, yeah. What's your takeaway on just ball handling tonight? It was a really physical game both ways. Um, it was uh, probably more so than any game this year, um, guys hitting the floor, you know, both teams. I, in the first, what, uh, seven, eight, ten minutes of the second half, it, there must have been eight times when both teams got multiple guys diving on the floor. So credit both teams, intensity level, um, that said, we had a lot of uh, balls in the paint for us right in front of our bench in the second half that um, whether it was a, an unclean uh, pass or unclean catch or uh, a, a Bama defender getting a, a, a finger or hand on it um, led to some turnovers, which led to some transition offense for those guys. Um, I mean, we, we also had some, um, some near misses, you know, at the rim in the second half, one or two of those go. Maybe you can extend the lead. Uh, but I felt like we played a little bit tight offensively down the stretch. Um, again, a lot of that had to do with, with, with their ball pressure um, and the fact that uh, they continued to chip into our lead and, and eventually took the lead. How do you keep this group from getting frustrated? Tennessee, Alabama, overtime against Florida, just not getting you know caught up in the fact that there were some missed opportunities in some of those games? Yeah, these guys will keep fighting. I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. I mean, this was a this was a top ten net opportunity, top five, whatever the heck they that, that they were or are. Um, and um, you know, it's not like we just um, gave up a lead to a you know to a, um, a 
mid-major opponent or you know, an inferior opponent. Um, our, I think our guys feel good about the way that we played for 2025 and, uh, and the way we continue to fight down the stretch. And in addition, um, you know, we, we play with a lot of heart considering what's been going on, um, you know, around this facility in the last few days. I mean, Silas Demery just played uh, 29 minutes, and he literally hadn't broken a sweat since he left Gainesville. Um, that's a lot of toughness. That's a lot of heart. Justin Hill, uh, same way. Uh, Jabri Abdurrahim, Noah Thomason. Um, you know, a lot of these guys have been have been banged up with with illness, and um, they uh, they swung away. You know, our guys played really hard. Was got to play better. Was Sonny a part of that too? Didn't see him anywhere. No, Sonny wasn't. Um, you know, it, w w the decision was to bring him off the bench and, and um, try um, R.J. Melendez, you know, coming off his best game. thought R.J. played well again tonight. And um, just one of those decisions where uh, we rode the guys, played, what, nine instead of ten. Um, decided on Dylan um, right there in the, in the pregame. You know, uh, Sonny will come back and, and be ready to go practice tomorrow and be – Effective and lead, but um, who knows? Who knows? We'll play. Uh, we'll play on Saturday. For your trouble, you get the uh, maybe the hottest team in the league in South Carolina I know. coming back in here, and uh, uh, and they'll they'll obviously be motivated but yeah. because of what you did in Columbia. Remember, 10, 15, 20 years ago in this league, and you get you get beat by a top ten net team. The net didn't even exist then, <laughs> and you get a couple. You know, you can beat right. Um, or you have, have a real chance of beating, and now it's like uh, in this league, it's it's ridiculous. And Lamont's done an amazing job, uh, picked near the bottom, at the bottom, whatever. I don't know. I hardly read that stuff, but uh, no one thought they, they'd be as good as they were. We really felt like as a staff, and I said it to you guys pregame and postgame, I think, uh, that we thought they were a tournament team, and we thought that that was our biggest win, and it turns out that it, it is obviously um, – they're really good, uh, and and they're going to keep winning a bunch. Um, again, credit those guys, credit Lamont and staff, his his team. They're they're uh, they're connected. They're tough. They're physical. They're sound. Um, we've got our hands full Saturday, but it's another great opportunity for us. Obviously, we have we have. Uh, we beat them. It was our best performance. Uh, it's going to have to be our best performance. Um, it's going to have to be as good or better uh, to beat them on Saturday. When you've got a repeat opponent like that, what are the challenges that come with that? Um, you know, I think both staffs probably feel like there's advantages. You know, the, the level of familiarity. Um, you know, if you're playing an inferior opponent, there's challenges, I think. Um, that you've got to overcome with your guys in terms of mentality and approach with these guys, our, our, our guys understand how good they are and how fortunate we were to go in there and steal one. Uh, and our guys watch. We've got a team full of basketball fans that enjoy uh, watching on the, on the tube and they'll be watching tonight and, and learning. And, uh, they know how good South Carolina is. So um, I don't know what challenge is really just uh, – They'll be jacked up, but they were jacked up the last game, both teams. So, this was, good college basketball game. It's okay, you got to come out. I'll just keep rambling. Um, this was your first pair of back-to-back -back losses since November um, mm -hmm. before SEC play. What does um, rebounding look like for you guys over these next few days, especially coming back at home for your first time to play back-to-back -back home games? <laughs> yeah, we got to get healthy. Um, we've got to hydrate. We've got to sleep. You know, especially four or five of these guys. Um, Got to get rest. Uh, it'll be more of a mental approach tomorrow, and then uh, for Friday we'll get after a little bit, but it'll be um, abbreviated. Because here we go again. You know, one o'clock tip uh, on Saturday, and uh, we're going to need every ounce of energy that, that we can get to guard those guys and to, to generate some offense. Any questions for Mike? Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Bye.